Good morning, gardeners. Well, it's part two of the tour around Bill's new garden. Um, you can see behind you over here the uh, landscaping around the house. That a lot of the plants over here are very brightly colored. Hawaii has a tendency to be really, really green. And, you know, green's cool, but sometimes it gets on your nerves. Um, I've noticed that a lot of local gardeners tend to like to landscape with bright colored foliage. Check it out. I mean, we're talking green, green, right? Everything is green. This thing over here is a Dracaena called Song of India. Real bright, nice leaves. A little Cymbidium orchid popping out below it over there. Some Oncidium. Then we got the Crotons. Cordylines or Hawaiian tea. They're all brightly colored. I love these Agave Attenuata around here. This plant is just great in this environment. I'm going to be using more of them. The uh, bright orange flowers on the Exoras are quite cheery too. Over here is another big group of the Agaves. This is a soft leaf Agave. No points. Uh, it's a pretty friendly plant. Starting to put in some food plants in with the ornamentals right outside the house over here. That's rosemary growing quite well in the area. Over here is one of the red dragon fruit. This guy over here is a well-developed clump of lemongrass. Right down there the limey green stuff is called Mexican spinach. It's a perennial spinach vegetable. There's some plain old Italian oregano. Over here I've got the Chinese chives and the classic uh, regular chive. They grow really well around here. And there's the ubiquitous sweet potatoes. Uh, we have many varieties of those around here. Most of them either the Okinawan purple or the native Hawaiian varieties. I have to start collecting some of the mainland types. I don't have them here. All down along this side of the driveway is one big stinking mess of grass, weeds, and vines. I have to keep beating it back so it doesn't close the driveway in. But going this way up the driveway, we've started taming things. Uh, you can see right here, I've got all kinds of cuttings from the uh, Hawaiian tea and the Songandia, a few hibiscus. Every time I prune them over in the yard, I stick them in the ground on this side of the driveway and they take off and grow. This is one of the native ohia trees right here. I put in from a seedling a few years back. Right here you can get a pretty good look at the taming that I'm beginning to do. Um, I'm going to start putting fall vegetables over here in October. And so we did a weed whack over on the grass. I laid some of the weed block down on it. Got some of the moving boxes laid right there along the edge. Um, I'm trying to get rid of most of the ferns and grass on the banks. They're over here. We'll leave some of the native sword ferns. They do well along here. And once I get it under control, then we'll go ahead and we'll start planting it up. Well, it's a pretty warm and hazy day here today. Um, but well, that out there is the Pacific Ocean. We're sitting way high up on the island where we look down not only on the ocean, but on the rest of the island from here too. Over in that direction is the chain of craters. Uh, towards Pahoa, that's where all the lava flows, is over in that direction. There is a big deep valley between here and there, and so uh, no problem with lava in this area. This grass over here between uh, where we're standing and the koa trees uh, looks soft and verdant, but it is not friendly. The local grass will suck you down. If you get tangled up in that stuff, there's no way out. You're a goner. That grass is the biggest reason I decided to start using this weed block around here. Over here then you see we got most of the rest of the place which is coffee. Lots and lots and lots of coffee. Uh, right here in the foreground a couple of young betel nut palms. We have at least four varieties of coffee out there. Um, I've got one of the uh, old-time 19th century varieties called Ula'a. That's this little guy right here. Very tight, green, compact plant. Most of the taller looking coffee out here is Conotypica. 
that's the stuff that's famous on the big island from Kona. And I've got an even taller variety further in the back. That's Jamaican Blue Mountain. Then I have another one that's kind of in between in size uh, called uh, Katera. That's a dwarf Katera form from Brazil. So we got four kinds growing out here. Um, every time I lose a coffee plant while I'm planting, I come back and I will replace the coffee with fruit trees. Uh, somebody asked me why I don't grow shade-grown coffee in this area. Well, generally we don't need to do that in Hawaii because the temperatures here are quite mild. and There's a lot of clouds and so on. But uh, it's apparently green uh, to do so. It's considered nicely environmental to have shade-grown coffee. So I just figured I'd throw fruit trees in between the coffee rows. That and some koa trees and some palms and such. So eventually the coffee will be shaded by an overstory of fruit. Right here to the south side of the coffee I've planted Hawaiian koa trees. Um, these are a few years old now. I don't quite remember. Uh, maybe five years. Gathered seeds uh, up on Mauna Loa and brought them down here and planted them. You see the trees are getting pretty big already. They grow reasonably fast as long as the grass doesn't overrun them. And there's the pineapples. The ubiquitous pineapples. There are in between anything and everything out here. Anywhere I find a place, we stick in white pineapples. This one's referred to as Kapoho White. I believe originally it was brought to the island under the name Sugarloaf. Pineapples between the coffee all over the place. Coffee was all grown by me from seeds. Um, starting back in 2007 and moving forward to a couple of years ago, um, I just kept planting coffee, harvesting the seed, planting the seed, growing more coffee, and continued until we had nearly an acre covered in coffee here. This is Capulin cherry. It's an actual cherry tree from the Andes in South America. Um, it should flower and make fruit here. We're going to find out. I see there are flowers high up in the tree, so we'll find out about it. It makes a black sweet cherry that's uh, reasonably useful for a lot of purposes. Coffee crop is definitely unripe, but looking good in this area because of the more steady rainfall that in Kona we not only get coffee on the trees in this stage, but right here on this branch we also have flowers coming. So coffee can kind of tend to be ever-bearing here in Puna. That little guy over there is a durian tree. Probably take him about 20 years to come around, but when he does, he's going to have a fruit that tastes like heaven, smells like hell. This is a very popular fruit here, worth quite a bit of money. Uh, I wish, in a way, that I had started planting it years ago because it takes a long time to yield. This guy here is Long On, the Dragon Eye. It apparently is going to take its time too, but eh, time's all I got, right? These two in line over here are Chico Sapote. This is one of my favorite Sapote. Um, it makes a fruit that tastes like pears with brown sugar kind of potato looking thing with a brown skin. Now the sap of the tree is also what they get chickle from. So this is where chewing gum originated. This here is Mame Sapote. Uh, big old brown fruit. Tastes like sweet squash probably. Something similar to that. Probably have to wait till about August but pineapple crops looking good. All right here is cinnamon. You know, when you have to harvest the sticks and then peel the bark off. I've never done this. We'll see. I just put the tree in about a year ago. Eureka Lemon. This is one of my favorites from California. I had to put one in here too. This crazy looking thing here is an ice cream bean. Uh, it's got a big old pod. Uh, kind of like a locust tree. It is a legume. fixes nitrogen. Uh, the pod is filled with uh, kind of cottony, sweet stuff. Sort of reminds me of cotton candy. This is the Albiu. Albiu is out of season at the moment, but this is one of my favorite fruit trees around here. You know, four years from a seed to fruit. Very delicious. Bright red leaves over here are cacao. Beneath them we have pineapples. This is ice cream bean. Over here is Rolinia over the top. 
course, flanked by coffee everywhere. There's the long on, a little bit bigger than some of the others. And this great big tall form of coffee over here is the Jamaican Blue Mountain. I don't know what I'm going to think about this one. It doesn't seem to yield that well around here, but it is one of the world's most valuable coffees. We'll see what it does in Hawaii. As you can see, that Kona Tipica over here does a much better job of making coffee beans. Royal Palms. My buddy Greg Adams gave me a few of these some time back. I decided to use them as support for my dragon fruit. Same here. I'm using Hawaiian Koa supporting dragon fruit. Well, it looks like we got some ripe fruit in here too. Guess I best get back and get that one for the birds too. Miniola Tangelo. This is star fruit, otherwise known as Carambola. I have two of them here side by side. Uh, they were grown from seeds off a friend's tree that had outstanding fruit. So far, no flowers, no fruit, but they'll get there, I'm sure. Psychotria viridis, the famous ayahuasca plant. Seems to be growing here almost as well as it does in the Amazon. This is the red philodendron. It's uh, actually quite a weed around here, but kind of pretty. Sort of like it. Mountain apple, Rolinia, and then right down here in the foreground, growing slowly but doing its thing, is Mame apple. Mame apple is a big round cannonball of a potato looking fruit with orange flesh that smells kind of citrusy and is a little bit crunchy. It's an oddball. I kind of like it. My macadamia nut trees are making macadamia nuts. I'm happy. Right over here looking pretty happy is a Valencia orange tree. Uh, I can't wait for this thing to start bearing fruit around here. Valencia oranges in this environment are incredibly sweet. They don't turn orange much. They tend to be kind of green or brown looking, but boy are they good. Right over here is my best Chirimoya tree. Seems to be growing pretty well. I don't think I've seen any flowers on it yet. I'm kind of looking around right now. I haven't had a chance to really check this out, but it's getting there one of these days. This guy right over here is a soursop tree. I cut the top out of that a few years ago to see if I can get it to spread, but no luck. Uh, it just sits there. <laughs> We've seen a few pieces of fruit on it so far, not too many. makes a great home for the uh, American chameleon, the anole. They like it. Their green color matches the tree quite nicely. All right over here is another carambola, star fruit. Um, and then sticking up above the crowd over there, that is the star apple. That's a big purple fruit with a star shape inside. The leaves are incredibly iridescent bronze on the back side. Very attractive tree. More cacao interspersed with coffee. Beautiful leaves on this stuff. More young jaboticaba. There's plumaria, that sweet smelling flower for lay. Got poi. Got taro. New jackfruit tree. It seems to be struggling a little bit from the drought, but new growth coming on looks okay. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see how this works out. It is the one and the only. I had a bunch of jackfruit trees in pots, but I went and sold them all. Guess I should plant some more jackfruit seeds. Uh, here's something you didn't expect to see. Apples on the Big Island. This is the Dorset Golden Apple from the Bahamas, and it's actually making fruit here in Hawaii at 1,600 feet. Amazing. Apples don't usually taste very good in the first year, and I just planted this thing last winter, but it made fruit. It's sweet and it's good. It's little. Didn't really size up very well, considering it's a baby tree, though. I anticipate in a few more years we'll actually start getting decent apples off this thing. They are edible right now. 
brings me back to California where I had 50 varieties in the backyard. So far here, I have two. Dorset Golden and then Ein Shemmer from Israel. Ein Shemmer hasn't made anything yet. Dorset Golden's doing pretty good. And so if apples won't grow for you here on the island, then say the heck with it and plant bananas, right? They do well here. And then, of course, what would any Hawaiian garden tour be like without pictures of blueberries? Blueberries do well here. Um, the only problem I have with them is the cardinal birds. The cardinal birds eat everything. I have to come up with a plan. I have several different varieties of them here. All of them pretty much come from the Gulf Coast down near Florida. Um, some do better than others. I started propagating some of the better growing ones. Probably do a few more of these, but like I say, I have to come up with a plan. Right now, I believe I have eight varieties of blueberries. So, if your blueberries won't grow, give up and plant hibiscus. Or pineapples. Or more hibiscus. Or maybe just plant orchids in your hibiscus. Maybe just plant a vanilla orchid. Looks like I got more pollinating to do here. Better go get my reading glasses on. So, this is Bill here from the Big Island, signing off. Got stuff to do today, gotta move along. Time to do some transplanting. Happy gardening. <laughs>